now, and I see some of the attendees are trickling in, but we're going to go ahead and get started now. Um, so before we begin and I introduce everybody, just want to go over a few webinar logistics. So at the end of this webinar, we'll have some time for Q&A. Um, we'll be collecting your questions throughout the webinar, so please make sure that you submit them through the Q&A feature, mm -hmm. and you'll be, you'll see, should see that on the bottom right-hand side of your uh, screen. Um, you can submit them directly to my colleague, Tricia Dugan, who is a recruiter out of the uh, New York office. Um, actually, now that I'm looking at it, I think she might be appearing uh, as Tricia Klingenberg. So in case you can't find her, please look uh, by her last name, Klingenberg. Uh, and you can submit those to her directly. She'll collect the questions from you, and then I'll uh, read those aloud at the end of this session. Uh, of course, we will not have enough time to cover all of your questions. So if you have any other remaining questions, feel free to email us at careers dot mba at carney dot com. Um, so with that said, I'm very excited uh, to kick off the DNI uh, at Carney webinar today. Uh, my name is Norbert. Um, I'm a part of the Proud Network here, which is our LGBTQ plus network, and also a recruiting coordinator um, out of the Washington DC office. Uh, but without further delay, um, I'd like to introduce our five panelists uh, who will be uh, talking about our DNI efforts at Carney today. Uh, and maybe we'll kick it off with uh, Caitlin uh, introducing herself first. Hi, I'm so happy to be here with all of you today, uh, getting in some quality time with my colleagues and then with everyone who's joined the call before our fall Friday starts at 3 p.m. So I'm Caitlin O'Keefe. I'm a partner out of the New York office. Uh, I've been with the firm for 13 years, which uh, it seems like a long time when I say it aloud, but the time has really flown by. Um, a couple of fun facts about myself. Um, I am a huge fan of working out. I obviously, it's been a little bit tougher in COVID. And so I um, decided that I was going to run the New York Marathon this year. Unfortunately, it got canceled, but I was tired of COVID interrupting my plan. So I decided I was going to run it anyway. Uh, and I ran last weekend with uh, another, with a manager out of the New York office. And we had all of our, car we had like five or six different Carney colleagues come and run different parts of the marathon with us. It was really awesome, some of whom I hadn't seen since February. Uh, so we had our nice socially distanced time outside. Um, I'm part of the Women's Network, and I'm also an ally to our network, Black at Carney, and our Proud Network. So really looking forward to, to spending some time with all of you today. And I will hand it over to Bachel. Thanks, Caitlin. Nice to see you. Um, nice to see all these faces after so long. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Botchel Cole. Um, pronouns are they, them, theirs. I'm a principal in our leadership change and organization practice, and I'm based out of San Francisco. Um, I am a, a, one of the pillar leads for the Proud Network. I lead the inclusion pillar, um, and I'm an ally to a number of our other networks. Um, both here and, and, and globally, we, we participate globally, which is really wonderful, and have, have just enhanced our learnings and sharing of best practices in our networks across the globe. And I think that's been a really good push that we've all done over the last couple of years. Um, so I wanted to explain the, the photos that I have here because, you know, one just looks like a pretty photo and you might be wondering why that's why I cared to share that. So, uh, you know, the photo on the left, surfing is something I'm very passionate about. That was the, I'd just gotten my board. You can see, you can tell because there's no wax on it yet, but I was very excited to get it out there. I haven't been doing a whole lot of that with COVID, but excited to do it again. And then I'm on a boat in the canals of Amsterdam in the photo on the right. This photo is from about five years ago. What I wanted to shout out here is, that's actually a Carney, that's the Carney boat. So when I was in Amsterdam for a meeting with our colleagues, uh, apparently our Amsterdam office has a boat. It's quite common over there. And so just to share a little bit more about the collaborative and and uh, and the camaraderie in our firm, um, you know, a, num a few consultants took time out of their day to give me a personal tour of the canals, which is always a really special memory that I have about the firm. Mark? Awesome. I did not know we had a boat. That's a, that's a very good thing to know. 
Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Mark Nassib. I am an associate out of the New York office. I am part of the digital transformation practice at Carney. So if you have any questions regarding the office or the practice, you know, feel free to ask. Um, I'm also part of the Middle East and Africa diversity network that we have. Um, and I've been with the firm, I think, almost two years at least at this point. I think fun fact about myself, uh, I had never really cooked before COVID. So when uh, when in desperate circumstances, I had to learn how to make something a little more than grilled cheese during COVID, and that's really when I started. Uh, I love really going out, meeting new people and travel and trying, you know, food across different cultures, but had never really ventured out into cooking. So that's uh, a new activity that I had taken up. Along with, I know the picture here is uh, mountain biking in Killington, Vermont. That's an activity we did over the 4th of July weekend. Um, also something I'm trying to pick up during those quarantine times. We're all always locked inside, so trying to get some more time outside. Um, still, still to tell whether this activity is going to stick or we're going to give up on it in the next few months. Mark, what's the best thing you've learned to cook in quarantine? <laughs> Uh, well, I think I think I briefly mentioned this earlier. The staple now is chicken nuggets, just because it's it's easy to do. Um, every now and then, I venture in something a little more complicated, like meat or steak or uh, sometimes salmon. But I think chicken nuggets, I kind of mastered that aspect. But anything else, you know, we're still try trial and error phase. That's um, a good group. But yeah, bravo. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, that being said, I'll hand it over to Alex. And uh, Mark is invited over to my house post-quarantine or post-COVID because chicken nuggets go over real well with my little kiddos. So that's a win. Um, I, I wish I could see everyone. It's so good to see some of my colleagues, though, that I haven't seen in a while. Um, I'm Alex Fitzgerald. I am a principal out of our New York office now. Um, fun fact, I'm by way of both Kearney, Toronto, where I summered, and Kearney, San Francisco, um, which I miss dearly. Um, um, I am a principal within our consumer practice, so I do a lot of work in beauty and apparel and all the fun stuff. Um, I've been with the firm for about five years. Um, I am part of our women's network. I also lead um, our women's allies group, um, which is a relatively new endeavor for us, um, but something that we're very excited about and I'm happy to talk more about. Um, I, sorry, I'm running out of batteries here, so I want to make sure that I'm um, Okay. Um, I... Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about um, my photos. Uh, so I have um, two photos here. Um, both are with the San Francisco office. Um, I, like I said, uh, I was part of that office for a number of years. Such a great um, office. Um, I think really just a true representation of the fact that we all work together. Um, but because we work together so much, um, and, um, you know, can really relate to what all of us are going through. It, it builds such a great sense of community. Um, so I think that the diversity networks just amplify that even further. Um, so the picture on the boat, which apparently we have a theme today, um, that's, that's a summer offsite. It doesn't look like it, but it is San Francisco. Um, and then the, um, the ski trip is the other, um, photo that I've included. Um, so yeah, happy to be here today. Happy to answer questions about the women's network or, you know, I'm an ally of many of our other diversity networks and um, it's something I feel very passionate about. So great to be here. I'll pass it. Awesome. Cool. Um, so as all of the, the rest of the colleagues have said, uh, happy to be here on this Friday afternoon. And as Caitlin continues to mention just before our fall Friday, so we get to, to log off. Um, but Kevin Burgo, I'm an associate out of the Boston office and part of our Black at Kearney group um, from the Boston office. Uh, a fun fact about me is throughout most of COVID, I've been babysitting uh, some nieces. Um, so I even took a, an LOA. I spoke to the firm and took an LOA over the summertime to sort of step away and help support the family at home. 
But through that time, I was tr busy trying to figure out if babysitting a one-year-old and a three-year-old was actually more exhausting than consultant. And I think it actually takes the cake uh, by quite a bit of margin. <laughs> um, but no, a little bit more about me. I'm an adrenaline seeker. So uh, being here, I've been in Northeast to fall. is a wonderful time to take the motorcycle out and cruise some, some back roads. Um, love to travel, which we obviously haven't been doing in COVID, which sort of takes me to my photo. Um, so this is in Australia, the Great Barrier Reef. This was our third time scuba diving of the day, and my legs actually started to cramp up. And so the scuba dive, uh, diving instructor um, was actually stretching me out. We were doing a Pilates class at the bottom of the ocean. Um, what I didn't know is that I was breathing heavily and going through my oxygen pretty quickly um, and then had to sort of scramble to the top, but uh, uh, made it out okay. <laughs> so... Um, it's a little bit about me, happy to chat about the Black at Cardi and, and any of the other diversity groups um, that the firm has here this afternoon. So, and with that, I think I'll be passing it over. Yeah, and I think you're passing it back to me, Kevin. Thank you. Um, so, you know, given the topic of, of today's webinar, um, I wanted to talk about diversity and the diversity and inclusion program at Kearney. Um you know, core to our firm's strategy is diversity and inclusion because we fundamentally believe that you know, through a more diverse and inclusive um, organization, we not only um, perform better, but we also deliver better for our clients. So um, it's, it's as easy as that. It's sort of fundamental to what we're trying to build and how we're trying to evolve. Um, but we also recognize that there's work to be done. Um, so in terms of how we get there, you know, we really focus on um, the talent that we attract and making sure that we are putting ourselves um, in the right position to, um, you know, connect with and attract um, a diverse talent base. Um, you know, from a firm culture perspective, you know, we're wanting to make sure that really what we do is inclusive and we may not be perfect. We know we're not perfect, but we are, um, you know, open and committed enough to help each other get better and, um, you know, really bring, bring the value of diversity to light through our culture. And then finally, you know, we realize that when working with our clients, you know, we need to, to also recognize the diversity that they're seeking within their organizations, um, and we also need to be working with them to become more diverse and, and see the value that diversity can bring. And, you know, this is all obviously very important. You need to have um, the pillars in place and the programs in place in order to fuel diversity within an organization. Um, but what I thought I would also share is just a recent story about, you know, what this looks like in, in real life. And I actually had a different story. And then yesterday, um, something happened, and I thought, well, this is topical. Um, so I'm working um, right now. We're putting together a proposal um, for a um, medical products and personal care company that wants to improve their supply chain. So we put together, you know, some of our best experts on a slide, and – um, one of those experts called out, you know what, this slide just doesn't look right because it doesn't represent who we are as a firm and, you know, what we're trying to achieve um, because there was very limited diversity on that slide. So, you know, as a team, we took a step back and said, okay, you know, how do we, who should be on this slide? You know, how do we make sure that um, we're giving opportunities for those who, you know, may not have um, the, the expertise right now, but are, have shown the interest and dedication to billing it, how do we elevate them so that they're on this slide and we're exposing them to our client? Um, because this team is not going to perform as well if we don't have that. So, you know, a real life example of how we, you know, yesterday changed a slide, um, but it was more fundamental than just changing a slide. And I, what struck me so well was, um, or what resonated with me so well was where it came from, because it was from one of those very, what 
a non-diverse quote unquote team member who said, hold on a second, this, this doesn't feel right. So I'll leave you with that story and, and happy to share many more stories um, as we progress here. All right. Um, going to the next page, I think. Um, so, uh, you know, as as someone who is a diversity, equity, and inclusion practitioner, um, you know, the the concept of awards in this space, I think, are really nice to acknowledge the hard work that that folks are making. But it's also, you know, I think what we're kind of humble in the awards and that we're we're proud to get them, but we know there's a lot of work to be done, as, as Alex said. Um, but just across some of the, the different groups here, you know, a, a number of our, our women partners and leaders have been recognized by Consulting Magazine um, and uh, Working Mother Magazine as well uh, for their contributions to the industry, uh, their contributions as leaders, um, and and for their contributions as working mothers uh, of the year. Um, for diversity leadership, we've had a, a number of folks over the years recognized as top diversity champions. And then the Proud Network too, um, you know, we've we've received quite a few accolades for for being out front leaders across the LGBTQ uh, uh, community. The one thing I'll add here, so we tenth year in a row for the 100% score on the HRC Corporate Equality Index. For those of you who may not know what that is, it's an annual survey put out by the Human Rights Commission, which and and. I remember the, f the first time I did it, and this is going to date me a little bit, but the first time I ever pulled one of these together was for a company I worked for, um, oh my gosh, like I think 15 years ago. <laughs> and 15 years ago, um, you know, there weren't that many companies that had a hundred, a score of a hundred. Um, and every year the criteria has gotten harder and harder as the LGBTQ community has been able to demand more and more equity and, and inclusion. Um, and so we're really proud of the fact that every year we work with our uh, lawyers and our uh, policy and procedure folks to make sure that we're, we're, make, we're hitting that bar. Um, we also actually just got our first 100% score on the HRC Corporate Equality Index in Mexico. Um, so this this is more of a, a U.S.-based effort, and we've just hit that same mark in their Mexico survey as well. Um, so it's, you know, it's uh, there's a lot of folks that are very dedicated to diversity, equity, and inclusion. We've received the external recognition, but then I'll, you know, I'll give an example. I'm currently working on a proposal right now um, for, a, for a telco company up in Canada who, um, is wanting to expand their culture of inclusion to include accessibility. Um, so that means how do they make their workplace uh, better and more inclusive for differently abled folks, um, but then also how can they engage with their customers and their communities um, on, on aspects of accessibility as well. And so quite frankly, you know, we do a lot of work in culture, we do a lot of work in DEI, but accessibility is a new topic for us. So what we're doing is we're actually partnering with a, a single shingle consultant who has the expertise in the space because, you know, we we take these topics very seriously and we don't want to sort of purport to be experts where we're not. And so it's a really unique partnership and I think uh, speaks to the authenticity of, of Carney's desire to to promote strong DEI agendas for ourselves and for our clients. Awesome, thanks, Bajal. So we have we've been talking a lot about our diversity networks, uh, but we haven't really said what all of them are. So we have nine networks within Carney, and you can see them all here. Um, and they all they play very different roles, or they can play multiple roles in our development as consultants and people. Sometimes the activities that we do as, as part of the network are really about professional development. Um, sometimes it's about personal development. Other times it's about networking both internally within the firm and externally. Um, and sometimes it's just about having fun, getting together and enjoying each other's company, and which is something that I know, like, especially being in person is something that we've all been missing. 
Um, and so I, I'll, I'd love for everyone on the call to share a few examples of how they've engaged with the networks and what it's meant to them. Um, I can start. I'm one of the, the leads for the America's Women's Network, um, and we recently did some seminars on personal branding. And we had a speaker come, it was a virtual event, and to talk about, you know, what does personal brand look like? What does that mean, you know, both, pro both professionally at work and also personally? And, you know, how does that translate to your LinkedIn profile? Um, and we talked about storytelling and did storytelling exercises. And the activity was so, like, it got such great feedback that we're actually rolling it out and doing small groups of storytelling with women just to talk about, you know, how can you, when you think about engaging your audience, how can you connect with them in a different way with storytelling? Um, and then I'll give one other example that's different, more on the fun side. Um, I went to a very fun Bollywood and Bhangra night uh, for our South Asian network where I, I got taught to dance. We watched a Bollywood movie, um, and I, it was really fun, really enjoyed it. So looking forward to more of those. But love to hear from my fellow panelists on um, some examples of how they've engaged with the networks and what it's meant to them. Cool. I can I can start. Um, so as mentioned up front, uh, I'm part of the the Black at Kearney group, um, formerly the African American Network, as you can see on the slide. And so the recent engagement was actually about a month ago. So every year the Black at Kearney group hosts a uh, professional development forum. And so last year it was it was in person, where as many folks in the network that can across the globe had flown to Chicago. And we spent two days um, sort of just just fostering ideas and figuring out how we can help each other out. So on one day we actually had a community involvement where we went to go plan and start building a house in the west side of Chicago. Um, and then that was on a Thursday afternoon. And then on a Friday, we spent some time just discussing with leaders, what is the, the direction of the firm? Uh, how can we, we, one, expand the funnel of intake at the bottom and then also help nurture and push folks through the chain so that we can see more people of color and more women and more diverse backgrounds in, in leadership positions. This year was a little different, obviously, because COVID, it was um, all virtual. However, we had events that were sprinkled throughout the entire week. So it was similar nature. We we, we have, I think, what the most famous um, sort of breakout session is in the professional development forum is around real talk. Um, and it, it it's as open as we want it to be in terms of do we think the firm, and these are all topics of discussion that we had, do we think the firm handled uh, the social unrest and is continuing to handle handle the social unrest in the country uh, appropriately? Uh, do we think that the firm is doing enough to, to give people of diverse backgrounds the resources and support they need to progress in this career? And it, it's all open, and these are all questions that are tossed to to diverse leadership, uh, and, and it's all honest feedback, and we, if there's anything that seems out of place, we try to devise a plan on, okay, well, how can we elevate this to, you know, the America's leadership team and bring this to the forefront and, and have it addressed, and so uh, this is actually very recent. It was all of maybe two or three weeks ago that we had our professional development forum, but just knowing that 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 uh, sort of community is always there. Uh, throughout the entire summer when I was on leave of absence, I had numerous people reach out to me and see how the family members are doing, how am I holding up, is there any way that they can they can sort of pitch in and help out. Um, so yeah, just understanding that that community is always there, I can always reach out to them is, is, is always good to know. Thanks, Kevin, that's awesome. And I know Mark does a lot of stuff with the Middle East Network. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Caitlin. Um, so for the Middle East and African Network, we've had a few different activities going on. I think in terms of uh, kind of professional development, et cetera, what we've done mostly is I think what we've been referring to as kind of a leadership series, where we've been having uh, partners, principals, managers, uh, VPs in the firm as well, uh, who are part of the Middle East and African Network or allies of that network, who have worked in the Middle East region or grew up there and you have any sort of ties to the region. Uh, join some of our calls, and it's kind of a similar session to what we're having here. So it's kind of a Q&A session where they talk about their experiences, they give advice to some of the junior members. Um, it's kind of an open discussion where any sort of questions can be asked towards uh, to the panelists um, and contributes uh, in various ways to kind of the professional development of the people that we have on the, on the phone, as well as um, kind of some sessions that we had had in person, you know, kind of pre-COVID times. Um, that, of course, you know, is kind of on the professional development side. We also have some more entertaining activities that happen. I know last year we did in the New York office, 
um, we organized a lunch and happy hour on a Friday when we had kind of most of the most of our New York office colleagues uh, be there in person. Um, of course, the theme was you know we had food from the Middle East, drinks from the Middle East area as well, um, just to make uh, to uh, promote you know diversity and inclusion at the firm. Um, Caitlin, I have an example if, if that works. Um, yeah. You know, with what one of the moments from this year that's brought me, you know, our CEO talks a lot about joy. And one of the most joyful moments this year was um, helping, and this is now the third member of our community, but helping a transgender colleague transition. Um, during COVID, with all of the challenges uh, of being virtual and, and having what are very um, emotional and, and bonding conversations over this medium, um, but just, you know, this is now our, our third colleague in our third region, and just seeing the firm rally around um, our colleague and share the support has been so powerful. Um, and and then seeing our women's network embrace, you know, women of all shapes and sizes, and you know, for lack of a better term, but really expanding the women's network to welcome these colleagues into the fold and engage them in a meaningful way. So it's been, you know, in a, in a, I always look for the bright spots. How do I keep myself going? And I think this was a really powerful moment for our firm um, and to, and to see the responses was really That's impressive. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, Botchwell, really touching. Well, um, I love all these stories and hopefully maybe we can share some more, but I also know that we have some questions coming in. So uh, we'll keep moving along for the Q&A portion. Thanks so much, Caitlin. So what I'm gonna do is I'll stop sharing uh, the deck that way all of our participants can see your beautiful faces. One second. Here we go, that should work now. Um, so we've received some questions already, but as I mentioned before, do keep them coming and uh, keep sending those through to my colleague, Trisha Klingenberg. Uh, but I'm going to kick it off with a somewhat personal question that I think is a, is a really great starter here. Um, could you describe how your network has impacted your career at Kearney? Um, I'm happy to go first. Um, so I'll give one example, and this works out really well because it was the example I was going to give on the, the last um, slide. So I'm, I'm bringing it back. Um, so last year, um, last October, um, our partners had a worldwide partners meeting, um, and they invited the Women's Network to um, – Women's Network members and some other members as well um, – to, to attend, um, and they, um, we spent the evening, you know, socializing and getting to know people. It's global, so, um, you know, there was lots of people who I'd never met before, um, and it, you know, it seems like, it could seem like something trivial, like, oh, cocktail hour, um, but I actually made some really great connections there that led to, um, you know, new proposal work, new support, um, and, you know, when I was going through my principal election process, um, I did have some folks reach out to me just who I'd met through that event saying, like, so happy to see you progressing with the firm, you know, let's have a chat, I can help you get prepared, um, and, you know, really want to see you um, continue to excel here. So, that was something that, you know, very, um, you know, very clearly was a, um, you know, something that was targeted at our, at the women's network um, for me, and that had a real tangible impact um, on my development at Kearney. I can, uh, I, I can go, um, unless you want to go, Caitlin. <laughs> I saw you on no. the stuff, so. Um, so when I first joined the firm as an intern um, back in 2018, um, I, it must have been the second or third email I received was from Donnie Harris, who's one of the Black at Kearney um, 
sort of leaders or is a leader, not sort of. Um, and that's someone that I just I continue to stay in touch with. So I went through and progressed through my summer internship, went back, finished school, and then came back and joined the real world. One of the first emails I received when I came back to the firm was from Dominique Harris again and said, hey, you know, glad to see that you didn't renew the offer and you're back. Uh, and then she just continued to to follow up with me understand and made me understand that she's always there for support. She then connected me with another a uh, few other people within the Black at Carney network. And before you know it, I ended up being staffed on on my first project through a connection that I had made in the Black at Carney network. I was then staffed in that project for a full year. Um, uh, it, it was a phenomenal experience and just continued to expand my network. Uh, I started to roll off that project and then other folks from within the Black at Kearney uh, network had reached out to me, hey, we see that you're coming available, would love to staff you. And so they had staffed me. I went on leave of absence. I came back and I reached right back out to the Black at Kearney network. Hey, I'm coming back. Uh, do any of you guys know of any projects that are staffed? And this is what I'm interested in. And I ended up getting staffed. And I ended up getting staffed on a project that had uh, a woman partner in Caitlin, um, a Black and Carney leader, another Black and Carney member, myself who's a Black and Carney member, a woman analyst, and then a Black and Carney analyst. It, it, I mean, it, Caitlin can probably attest that might have been the most diverse pro, uh, team that we've had like in the firm in quite some time. Uh, but it was phenomenal, and it just goes to show you that you can always leverage that network, and people will always try to put you in positions to succeed, make sure that you're armed with the resources you have to succeed, and will always be there to sort of kind of catch you and answer any questions that you have. Yeah, the project's awesome. I mean, in addition to getting work to work with Kevin, which is awesome, <laughs> which is a good bonus, um, it's really made me see the value of diversity, and I think something that I learned early in my career from a mentor of mine uh, who was active in Black at Carney was staffing deliberately. So, like, as you staff your projects, staff for diversity, diversity of thought, because we have our best ideas, we're the most creative um, when we bring that to the table. And, you know, we set an example for our clients when we do that, um, and, you know, I see the impact on them as well. Cool. And that's uh, back to or, or Mark. Oh, yeah, I can move on to the next question, too. Um, so this participant asked, many of you have mentioned an ally for diversity networks within Kearney. How do, do allies provide support for these various groups? And I guess what, it, what does it mean to be an ally uh, for a diversity network here at Kearney? Um, I, I'm happy to start with that one um, because we have allyship as one of the pillars of the Proud Network. Because to your point, I think for many years, the Proud Network, you know, as we've grown in size, but we, we had this amazing network of allies who were always like, how can we help? How can we help? And we were like, that's a great question. How can we best engage you in helping? And, um, you know, I think a lot of the networks have, have wrestled with that as well, which is why also, um, there's a group that sits as a liaison across the different diversity networks because, as you know, you know, you know, for example, I would identify with a number of the different of number of the different groups, and so I can't. I'm not just going to belong to one. And so, how do we get some of that visibility across? And and our allies have been really uh, have taken a strong role in, you know, sharing the burden. So when I say sharing the burden, I think we've We've developed some, you know, interesting trainings for allies on how to uh, create and support inclusive spaces. So, for example, um, in the Proud Network, I know we had a big conversation around, hey, you know, if something comes up, don't have it be the member of that group having to speak up and say, you know, hey, I, you know, what you said hurt me. You, you speak up. You, you, you recognize that it's likely easier for you to speak up and say, hey, that's not how we do things here than it is for the person who's been on the spot. So, you know, personally for me, um, a, a number of allies have reached out and supported me in, in, by speaking up and correcting when someone misgenders me in a, in a conversation. And, and I, I have to tell you, you know, for those of you on this call, you know how when something happens, it's a tension, you tense, and you're like, okay, how am I going to do this? And when someone steps up and supports you and says it for you and shares that burden, it is 
an incredible weight off your shoulders. Um, and so I think we're all really establishing better ways for allies to not just sort of sit on the outside of these groups, but to be on the teams, in the, in the groups with us, supporting our programs and our initiatives and our efforts, um, and just sharing that burden um, and supporting us, which has been great. Yeah, I can add, I'll add a serious story and then a fun story. Um, so, or what I think is a fun story. Um, so I think for, like I mentioned, I'm, I'm uh, leading the um, allyship part of the women's network. Um, and I think in terms of what is an ally, you know, the way that we've considered it is really, you know, someone who has expressed, someone who actively um, advances gender equity at Kearney. So that's sort of the, the definition of it for in our eyes. Um, but I think where we've really focused our efforts and where we hope to continue to focus our effort is helping allies understand what action looks like. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll send out, um, you know, an article and say, if you want to act on this, you know, here's some ideas. Um, and, and that's sort of how we're starting to, um, to really engage our ally community. Lots of work to do. Um, but, you know, there's, I think what's so great is the amount of folks who have raised their hand and say, I consider myself an ally. Um, you know, help me be a better ally. Um, and, you know, help me help others be a better ally so that that burden that Botchel um, spoke about is, is really shared and um, and taken away. The fun story is um, <laughs> what allyship may look like. Um, so the our proud network rebranded um, recently um, within the last year, I think it felt like within the last year. Um, and there was a whole bunch of of um, excitement around it. And, you know, with the new logo that you can see on Kevin's screen, you know, there was allies were given shirts to wear. Um, and I got a shirt and I proudly wore my shirt and um, I wore it in front of my son, who's three. And he was like, I love your T-shirt. Like, this, I love rainbows. And so now that's his like favorite t-shirt and he wears it to bed. And, you know, I just love the idea of like, you know, that he sees, I mean, he doesn't necessarily know what it means, but that that is something that's associated with my work, you know, and, and I think that that's really special. We also had those awesome rainbow sunglasses too, which I wore all summer. <laughs> those are really fun. I didn't get a shirt, but I got the sunglasses. It was awesome. Thank you all so much. I'll go ahead and move on to the next question. Uh, a participant asked, uh, he would like to hear what the panelists are most looking forward to for the future of diversity and inclusion at Carney, um, including future and upcoming initiative events. Uh, so what I'm most excited about sort of ties into the conversation that we just had and the points that both Bacho and Alex had made it's it's the action part so the black at Kearney allyship group has I, I think is still fairly new and so as it was being developed a partner who I'm actually very close with had just called me directly and said hey what can I do to help I know I can go online and I can sign this pledge and I can sign that pledge but what can I do to help bring people together more and help them progress in their careers when you look at the statistics, I think some of the Black at Kearney leaders are responsible for staffing the most Black folks at the firm. And it, that's a lot of burden to put on the four or five leaders. And so he's just being very deliberate and, okay, I need to expand my network so that I can communicate and I can get familiar with the folks in this network so that as staff and opportunities come, I can put them on projects and put them in places to succeed. I currently don't have any mentors, so what am I going to do? I'm going to reach out to the network, 
the Black Hat Carney Network and see if anyone is looking for a mentor. When you, even when you look at the mentorship, a lot of the folks within the Black Hat Carney mentors have Black Hat Carney uh, within the network have Black Hat Carney mentors. And so he's just being very deliberate in terms of trying to step in and and get other people in the firm to also step in and help sort of pull everyone up. And so what I'm most excited about is obviously there's a lot of social unrest going on in the United States right now and people are still trying to figure out how to work from home and different work styles and people have responsibilities at home. What I'm most excited about is just the action. There's been a lot of sort of brainstorming and strategizing in the early stages. But now I think is where the rubber starts to meet the, the road and you can see a lot of the Carney initiatives that leadership is trying to put forward and that all of these different allyships are starting to put forward actually gain some traction and folks are starting to get more involved. So I, I can only anticipate it's going to continue to improve and increase as the year goes on. And then as we start to get into a more normal state where folks are actually coming together and being able to uh, go and perform any sort of community activities, I think it's just going to continue to snowball. I um I'll add on to what Kevin said. Like I'm I'm I love the idea of action. I'm really excited to see more diversity in our leadership and our partnership. So um, we have uh, in in my promotion class there were three women who got promoted to partners, um, and then I know I think there's like five or six women now who are up for going through the process. Um, and I, I you know, we're also going through board elections for a board of directors and we have diversity, great diversity there too. So just like seeing uh, more diversity across the partnership and in leadership across all levels in the firm is really exciting for me. I mean, having been with the firm for 13 years, I don't think when I started that I would one, I didn't think I would one day be a partner, but it feels very natural. It feels like a great fit. I'm so proud to be one with the other women, um, with the other women partners and I look forward to to getting more of them as part of the partnership. Cool. Um, so I'll squeeze in one last question here before we uh, close off. Um, the question here is, uh, how do I let a network know uh, that I'm, I'm interested and how can I get involved? Uh, Mark, maybe you can tackle this one. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think, it's fairly straightforward. I mean, a lot of that information is uh, is found either on Global Link or when you join. I know also that a lot of the new joiners, uh, once, I think it's when it's your first day of internship or first day of full-time uh, recruiting or starting as full-time, you get an email with all of the diversity networks at the firm uh, with who the point of contact is, and you can just reach out to that individual, that person, and, you know, they will share the details with you. Um, if you know, that's not a route that we want to go, and there's a particular network that you want to be part of, and you know someone who's part of that network. Again, you know, everyone is uh, willing to help you become part of that network and can easily put you in touch with uh, the individuals who are part of that network to make sure that you can participate in all of the activities. Potentially, if you want to help them plan some of those activities, they can put you on uh, all sorts of panels and boards for those networks as well. Any other uh, routes that I missed? Uh, Norbert, or anyone else on the panel? Oh, well said. It's easy to join the Women's Network because you just, like, when you join, you just check a box if you want to join. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, easy to get engaged. But I think, too, like, the great thing, I mean, you know, we it's just, like, we have a lot of announcements. We talk a lot about the activities that are coming up. Um, and so, you know, sometimes, like, I'm not even part of networks, and I get emails in my inbox, and I get excited about the events, and I join. So, and it connects me to them, and then sometimes I, you know, I become more proactive or, you know, a stronger ally of the network through those things. Definitely, yeah. I think whenever there are activities that networks are planning, there's emails are sent either company-wide or office-specific about those networks. Um, and so, if you're interested in attending those events or joining the network, again, that, that's usually uh, a good way to to participate as well. Great. Um, thank you all so much. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, move on to the closing. Uh, so thank you all very much for participating in today's webinar. Um, I hope you found it informative. Uh, but we want to make sure to, that we're staying in touch with you uh, moving forward. So as I mentioned earlier in the webinar, you can reach out with any remaining questions to careers.mba at carney.com 
but also we've uh, gone ahead and listed uh, emails uh, for our panelists here. So if you'd like to learn more about any particular network, feel free to reach out to them. Um, with that said, we have um, some more exciting webinars coming up, including our social impact webinar uh, next week, uh, then the interview overview webinar and interview case workshop. So you can sharpen those uh, casing skills. Um, with that said, uh, again, thank you all so much for joining us today. And thank you to all the panelists uh, for sharing your stories and uh, for letting us know what DNI is all about at Carnegie.